Israel did not defeat the desert by fighting nature, but by understanding it better than anyone else. In this video, we are going to look at how necessity forced Israel to rethink water, soil, and food production from the ground up. We will explore the Negev Desert, the failures that came first, and the breakthroughs that followed. From drip irrigation to sensor-driven farming and large-scale water recycling, this video shows how limits became design constraints. It is not a miracle story. It is a disciplined story, built over decades, one decision at a time. Most people never stop to question where their food really comes from. They walk through supermarkets in London, Paris, or New York, pick up fresh vegetables, and assume those crops were grown somewhere naturally fertile, with rain, rivers, and rich soil. What almost nobody realizes is that some of those vegetables were grown in a place where nature never intended farming to exist. A place where summer temperatures rise beyond 50 degrees Celsius, where rainfall is so rare it barely registers, and where the soil itself actively resists holding water. By every traditional definition, this land should be useless for agriculture. And yet, it has become one of the most productive farming zones on Earth. This is not a story about luck or favorable conditions. It is the story of how Israel transformed one of the harshest desert environments on the planet into a global center of high-tech agriculture. At its core, this is not just about food. It is about survival, engineering under pressure, and what happens when a nation is forced to innovate because failure is simply not an option. The decisions made here were not about comfort or efficiency in good times. They were about staying alive in bad ones. The story begins in the Negev Desert. This region alone covers more than half of Israel's total land area, yet it looks completely hostile to life. During the day, the sun burns relentlessly, heating the ground until it radiates back like an oven. Humidity is almost non-existent. The soil is not the dark, rich earth farmers dream of. It is a stubborn mix of sand, rock, and salt that refuses to hold moisture. In some parts of the Negev, annual rainfall barely reaches a few centimeters. By traditional agricultural standards, this land should have been abandoned from the start. According to every rule taught for thousands of years, farming here should be impossible. Seeds should dry out within hours. Roots should fail to establish. Crops should die long before maturity. Any water applied to the surface should evaporate before it ever reaches a plant. And yet, vegetables grown in this same desert are shipped across continents and end up on dinner tables thousands of kilometers away. Tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, herbs, and melons grow here in consistent quantities and predictable quality. That contrast is not accidental. It is the result of decades of deliberate experimentation and engineering. To understand why Israel went down this path, you have to go back to its earliest days as a state. When Israel was founded in 1948, it faced an immediate and severe food security crisis. Refugees arrived in massive waves from Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. Within just a few years, the population doubled. Food demand surged overnight. There was no time for slow agricultural development or long-term experimentation. People needed to eat, and they needed to eat immediately. At the same time, Israel's geography offered little mercy. Large areas of the country were arid or semi-arid, with the Negev posing the greatest challenge of all. The fertile coastal plains and valleys were limited in size and already under strain. Unlike other nations, Israel did not have vast river systems, large freshwater lakes, or predictable rainfall patterns to fall back on. Water itself was a strategic vulnerability. Early attempts to apply European farming methods failed almost immediately. Flood irrigation wasted enormous amounts of water through evaporation. Plowing sandy desert soil produced nothing but dust. Crops planted with optimism withered within days. Each failure carried a heavy price, because every liter of water lost mattered. Traditional farming was not just inefficient in this environment. It was dangerous. Instead of retreating, Israel's leadership made a decision that would shape the country's future. David Ben-Gurion, the nation's first prime minister, declared that Israel's destiny would be tested in the Negev. This was not a symbolic statement. It was a strategic commitment. If the desert could not be made productive, 
Israel would remain permanently exposed to food shortages, economic pressure, and political vulnerability. The desert was no longer seen as a burden. It became a proving ground. The breakthrough did not come from copying existing models or importing foreign solutions. It came from paying close attention to how nature actually behaved. In the 1930s, engineer Simca Blass noticed something unusual while walking through an arid area. One tree stood healthy and green, while everything around it was dying. There was no underground spring and no special soil. What Blass noticed instead was a small pipe nearby, leaking water slowly, drop by drop, directly into the ground near the tree's roots. That tiny leak changed everything. It revealed a simple but revolutionary idea. Plants did not need large volumes of water spread across the surface. They needed small, precise amounts delivered directly to their roots. That insight challenged thousands of years of agricultural tradition built around flooding fields and soaking soil. From that observation came drip irrigation. Later, it evolved into subsurface drip irrigation. Instead of spraying or flooding fields, water is delivered through narrow tubes placed close to the root zone. The surface soil stays dry, which drastically reduces evaporation. Weeds struggle to grow without surface moisture. Most importantly, nearly every drop of water goes exactly where the plant needs it. This idea alone reshaped desert agriculture. But it was only the beginning. Over time, Israeli engineers refined these systems to an extraordinary level of precision. Modern subsurface drip irrigation systems are buried beneath the soil and controlled electronically. Water delivery is adjusted plant by plant, sometimes minute by minute. These systems can reach efficiency levels close to 95%. In comparison, traditional irrigation methods often lose half their water before plants ever benefit. In a desert, that difference determines whether farming survives or collapses. But water delivery by itself was not enough. Israeli agriculture evolved into a fully integrated system where irrigation and nutrition became inseparable. Through a process known as fertigation, nutrients are dissolved directly into the irrigation water and delivered straight to plant roots. There is no runoff and no guessing. Every plant receives exactly what it needs when it needs it. Sensors embedded in the soil constantly monitor moisture levels, salt concentration, and nutrient balance. These sensors feed data into control systems that adjust water flow in real time. If temperatures rise, delivery changes. If sunlight intensity increases, nutrient ratios shift. Plants are no longer left to chance. Their environment is actively managed. At this point, farming in the Negev stopped resembling traditional agriculture altogether. Fields turned into engineered systems. Control rooms replaced guesswork. Dashboards displayed real-time data. Algorithms helped decide when plants drank, how much they received, and how they responded to stress. Farming became an applied engineering discipline, guided by data rather than intuition alone. By the end of this transformation, the Najivi was no longer just a desert where crops survived against the odds. It became a controlled production environment capable of supplying food to global markets. What began as a desperate response to scarcity turned into one of the most advanced agricultural systems on Earth. Once Israel solved the problem of how to deliver water efficiently to plants, a much larger question still remained. Where would that water come from in the first place? Precision irrigation is useless if the supply itself is unreliable. In a country with no major rivers, limited natural freshwater reserves, and unpredictable rainfall, water security was the real battlefield. Israel's answer to that challenge did not rely on a single solution. It relied on building an entirely new water economy from the ground up. The first pillar of that system is desalination. Along Israel's Mediterranean coastline, massive reverse osmosis plants pull seawater directly from the ocean and strip out the salt at industrial scale. This process was once considered too expensive and energy-intensive to be practical. Israel invested in it anyway, refining the technology, driving down costs, and integrating it into national infrastructure. Today, the majority of Israel's drinking water comes from desalinated seawater. What was once an unlimited but useless resource has become a dependable freshwater supply. 
but desalination alone was not enough. Producing water is only half the equation. Using it wisely is where Israel truly separated itself from the rest of the world. The second pillar of the system is wastewater recycling. In most countries, water is used once and discarded. In Israel, water is treated as a circulating asset. Nearly all municipal wastewater is collected, cleaned, filtered, and reused, primarily for agriculture. Water flushed away in cities does not disappear. It is reclaimed, upgraded, and sent south to irrigate desert farms. No other nation recycles wastewater at this scale. In Israel, more than 80% of wastewater is reused. In many developed countries, that number is below 20%. This closed-loop system means agriculture does not compete directly with households for freshwater. It also means the desert can be farmed without draining natural ecosystems. By combining desalination with large-scale recycling, Israel decoupled agriculture from rainfall. Crops no longer depended on weather patterns or seasonal uncertainty. Water became predictable, measurable, and controllable. That single shift changed everything. As water security stabilized, Israeli agriculture expanded beyond open fields into advanced greenhouse systems. These structures are not simple plastic tunnels. They are climate-controlled environments designed to regulate temperature, humidity, airflow, and light. In a desert where outside conditions swing violently between day and night, greenhouses create consistency. Plants grow without shock, stress is managed deliberately, and yields become predictable. Inside these greenhouses, farming operates more like manufacturing than tradition. Sensors track plant growth, leaf temperature, and transpiration rates. Software adjusts irrigation and nutrients automatically. Shade screens reduce heat load during peak sun hours. Ventilation systems control airflow to prevent disease. Everything is measured, logged, and optimized. This level of control allows Israeli farmers to grow crops out of season. When winter shuts down production in much of Europe, Israeli greenhouses continue operating. That timing advantage alone makes desert agriculture economically powerful. It allows Israel to dominate off-season export markets where prices are higher and competition is limited. The same engineering mindset extends into livestock production. Israel's dairy industry is often cited as one of the most productive in the world, despite operating in a hot climate. Israeli cows produce more milk per animal than their counterparts in cooler regions. This is not the result of genetics alone. It is the result of constant monitoring and environmental control. Cows wear sensors that track movement, feeding behavior, and body temperature. Climate-controlled barns reduce heat stress through ventilation and cooling systems. Data platforms analyze patterns and flag early signs of illness before visible symptoms appear. Farmers intervene early, improving animal health and productivity while reducing losses. In this system, animals are not pushed blindly. They are managed intelligently. Pest control follows the same logic of precision and balance. Rather than relying heavily on chemical pesticides, Israeli farms often use biological solutions. Barn owls are introduced to control rodents naturally. Beneficial insects are released inside greenhouses to manage pests without poisoning the environment. These methods protect soil health, reduce chemical residue, and support long-term sustainability. Nature is not treated as an enemy. It is treated as a system that can be guided. The economic consequences of this approach are significant. Israel has no oil wealth, limited mineral resources, and very little naturally fertile land. Yet agriculture contributes billions of dollars in exports every year. Crop yields per hectare far exceed global averages, especially in greenhouse production. Israeli agricultural technology companies export irrigation systems, sensors, and software worldwide. The desert itself has become an export product, not in land, but in knowledge. Farming in Israel is not seen as low status or outdated work. It is a technical profession that demands engineering skills, financial investment, and continuous learning. Many farmers operate within cooperative models that give them shared ownership of processing facilities, cold storage, logistics networks, and export infrastructure. 
This structure allows them to capture value across the entire supply chain instead of selling raw produce at thin margins. In advanced greenhouse systems, a single hectare can generate enough revenue to justify investments worth millions. These are not small subsistence plots. They are engineered production systems built for resilience, efficiency, and global competition. One of the most symbolic outcomes of this transformation is the cherry tomato. Perfected through Israeli agricultural research, it became a global staple. Crops grown under controlled stress often develop higher sugar content and richer flavor. Desert agriculture does not just produce food efficiently. It often produces food that tastes better. Flavor becomes a side effect of resilience. When you step back, the Negev is no longer just a desert. It is a living laboratory. It shows what happens when scarcity forces innovation instead of surrender. As climate change expands arid zones and water shortages become more common, the lessons from Israel's desert agriculture grow more relevant every year. This is not a local success story. It is a preview of the future. The uncomfortable truth is that nature does not reward comfort. It rewards adaptation. Israel did not wait for better conditions. It engineered its way forward. And in doing so, it proved that land quality matters far less than human discipline, long-term thinking, and the willingness to confront limits head-on. What the Nejivi teaches us is uncomfortable but powerful. Nature does not care about tradition, comfort, or habit. It responds to precision, discipline, and adaptation. Israel's desert farms are not proof that the environment no longer matters. They are proof that thinking does. As water becomes scarcer and climates grow harsher, the ideas tested here will shape what survival looks like elsewhere. If this video changed how you think about food, engineering, or what is possible under pressure, like the video, share it with someone who needs to see it, and subscribe to the channel for more stories like this.